Hey there, Wealth Press Minus Letter subscribers, viewers, traders, and investors. Today I have a special guest. Chris Dreesen is the CEO of Slang Worldwide Inc., trading on the OTC under the symbol SLGWF and trading in Canada under the symbol SLNG. Chris, welcome. Good morning. Thanks for having me. You bet, Chris. I've been following Slang Worldwide for a long time. It's my good friend Bruce Linton's. He always talks about it as one of his favorite companies. And I'm like, I got to get these guys back on the air and see what I'm missing here. So, just to refresh the memory of our previous viewers and to introduce the company to our new viewers, can you give us a thumbnail on the company's business model and business? You bet. Uh, the best way to describe slang is we're obviously a cannabis-focused CPG and branding company. I would tell people that we're a non-traditional MSO. Uh, we've got you know 16 different markets. Most recently, have announced that we're going to be moving into Missouri and Virginia. Um, so we are very much multi-state. But more than that, we're multi-brand, multi-channel, multi-product, multi-segmented. Uh, so we do things really two different ways. In our emerging markets, we develop a strategic partnership with folks like Truly or Gage. Uh, Natura out in California, where we work with them to bring our products to market. Uh, in our core markets, which are Colorado and Oregon, um, we do all those things we're set ourselves. So we're vertically integrated up through wholesale. And then we have a thriving uh, CBD, e-commerce, uh, and non-THC cha THC channel uh, where we sell hardware uh, and now CBD. Wow, fantastic. So you guys have been quietly going about your knitting, as the expression is. Uh, while a lot of companies have struggled, what is the key ingredient of your approach that has enabled you to survive and thrive in this otherwise difficult time? You know, it's brands. You know, our, our legacy company, Organa Brands, prior to that, Organa Labs has been doing this for 11 years. So uh, CPG brands dominating things like market share, market penetration, things of that nature are not new to us. Interestingly enough, that's become very in vogue in the cannabis re uh, industry recently. So that's something that we've preached all along. Uh, and our secret to success is our house of brands. We've got six brands that cover every major category in the cannabis industry. Not only that, we're segmented within those brands. So premium value, uh, things of that nature. So we're, we're wide, we're deep, uh, and we, uh, we come to win the CPG game in, in the cannabis industry today. And that's been, been the secret to our success really now for over a decade. Sure. Okay. So last uh, last time I spoke to you guys, it was uh, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but you guys had also grow operations in Ontario, and I'm wondering if you guys have now stepped away from the production side to focus on this house of brands model. No, not at all. Uh, in fact, in our core markets, we always produce. But what you're referring to is our LP. It's a JV with canopy growth in uh, Greenhouse North America called AgriFarm. Uh, it's right up there, as you mentioned, in Ontario and Cremore. So that business absolutely is producing products for the Canadian market. In fact, we've got both Open and Firefly products, our vape offering. Um, in Saskatchewan, British Columbia, Ontario. In fact, the latest, greatest numbers that I got out of Ontario were that we're now the number five uh, disposable being sold in the province. And I want to say open somewhere near, near the middle of the pack. What's really impressive when you think about that is we didn't even start sales until about 60, 75 days ago. So we literally are very, very new uh, entry. Uh, and it's great because Canadians clearly are voting with their dollars. And uh, they love the products that we put out, which is no surprise to us, but always makes you feel good when you go to a new market, a new country, um, and have the success that we're experiencing. And we're looking to build on that with more products to come. Sure. Okay. Let's uh, talk a bit about your strategic partnerships with Truly Engage. How do those work for a Canadian LP? Yeah, you know, much the same. So AgriFarm, it's, they're all formulated and basically structured the same way. And so the way those things work is that we always look for the right fit, the infrastructure, the capital, the leadership of what's going to predispose us to having success in a given market. We found that with the folks you've mentioned. And then what we do is we come in and we assist them with everything back of the house, setting up their labs, equipment optimization. How do we uh, increase yields? How are we doing everything so that these businesses have the best shot at making these products in the most affordable way possible that allows them to have the most success possible? 
We then take that a step further, which is where we differ than a lot of the other folks that license brands in that we assist them with moving those products through the market. So case in point uh, there in Ontario and really for the rest of Canada, we do inside sales for AgriFarm. So we're calling on dispensaries that are in those provinces, encouraging them to order from the provincial distributors. So not only do we help them make the products, give them the SOP, the, the proven processes of how do you make these best in class products, but then we're also assisting them with making the, the increasing velocities through the market. So our strategic partnerships are always pinned on proven processes to start uh, and then being able to get out our brands into those markets and making sure that those products are selling through in the in the most uh, effective way possible. Sure. All right. Switching to financial data now, you reported Q3 2020 revenue of 7.9 million, a 73 percent increase over the same quarter in the previous year. Is uh, is that pace of revenue growth going to continue? A and B. When do you get to real non-adjusted profitability? You bet. Great question. So the big difference you're going to see, and really with Q3, of course, Q2, a lot of people will remember Colorado, which is one of the places we're most heavily distributed and where I'm sitting at now, was one of the first places to be a hotspot for COVID. International ski tourism, we get a lot of tourists that come here to visit the resorts uh, just to the west of me. And so we were really one of the first places. So you had a, a uncharacteristic dip in Q2, much like the rest of the world. We rock it out of that in Q3, as you mentioned. The big shift that people are going to see, and this only was a taste in Q3, was that we've now completed acquisitions that make us a plant-touching company in both Oregon and Colorado. So you should expect more revenue growth. We're very excited about our Q4 call that will be coming up here uh, in April. You know, I'm not going to promise that we're always going to grow 70 plus percent quarter over quarter, but you are going to see a material shift in both our revenue and profit due to us becoming plant touching profitability. We do expect to come this year in 2021 on a consistent basis. We do expect to spin off positive cash flow by the end of the year. And that's because we've done a great job of cur curtailing our expenses and expanding with some of these best in class operators. So you're seeing more revenue come in, expenses go down. Obviously, that lends itself to profitability. Uh, so our shareholders in the world should expect those things from us in 2021. Sure. So I ask every cannabis CEO this question whose operation or has exposure in the U.S. How important is the election of the Biden administration to the future of cannabis and the associated revenue in the United States? You know, here's hoping. I, I, I would call it cautious optimism. You know, Democrat, well, again, we've been doing this since 2010. So we've had Democrats, we've had Republicans, everybody and their moms had an opportunity to really put their stamp on the cannabis industry uh, and really hasn't to date. So, you know, uh, obviously with every new administration, there's new hope, there's new optimism. And certainly you're, you're hearing it talked about a lot more. So whether that's safe banking, whether that's the MORE Act, whether that's descheduling, uh, is, it, is it up to interstate commerce? Is it full-blown legalization? You know, all of those things would be welcome news, uh, particularly for publicly traded cannabis companies like ourselves. But Slang has a unique opportunity in that we compete and win now in some of the most competitive markets in the country. Uh, and again, we're in 16 different markets, 14 states, Canada, Puerto Rico. So any of those handicaps that are currently placed not only on our business, but all cannabis businesses, uh, Section 280E with taxes, for example, the lifting of any of those handicaps is just gas on this fire. And look, it's a matter of time. I don't think anybody... Uh, disagrees with that. It's just how long is that going to be? So here's hoping. And, and look, if they go through with some of the things that are being talked about, it'll be an absolute catalyst in the tailwind, not just for slang, uh, but for all cannabis businesses, particularly those that are multi-state uh, and particularly those that are public. You bet. All right, Chris, that's great. We're going to leave it there for now. I appreciate your time today. We'll come back to you soon. Thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me.